the over the person in the fall and threatening to withhold federal aid if they don't. Um, are you concerned about that? Well, first of all, I don't think um, a one-size-fits-all policy on any of these issues makes a lot of sense. Um, what we've done here in Massachusetts is work closely with our, our colleagues in the healthcare community, the pediatric community, and the um, and the education community to put together a program that's based on this idea that we would like to see kids return to school. Um, but as part of that, DESE is also expecting schools to develop um, programs that would work on either a hybrid basis or a remote basis, depending upon what happens. And I think most of all, uh, one of the things we've tried to do is to create some uh, frameworks for people around how to think about this issue, because this is July, we're talking about September and beyond, and I think it's inappropriate for the feds uh, to think about this as a one-size-fits-all. I think what they ought to be doing is working with folks like us and others to come up with strategies that ensure that they and we can work together uh, to ensure that schools have the resources they need to be able to open. And I'll give you a good example of that. When we announced our proposal, um, what was it, two weeks ago now? Um, time. Whenever we announced our proposal, we talked about the fact that we had about uh, over $900 million in resources, most of which was federal, um, that was available to support communities and school districts as they went through the process of figuring out how to develop these plans. I think that's a much more effective way for the feds to play in this space than put a one-size-fits-all or, <clears throat> or an ultimatum in place. Because facts on the ground are going to be different depending upon where you are. And the goal here ought to be to provide the kind of supports that the feds believe would make it most likely for school districts and for communities to succeed in reopening their schools. Oh, no.